In this video, I'm going to give you a mind-blowing clip of the chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, Marco Rubio, talking very candidly about UFO reality. But before I do, I want to share with you a short excerpt from an article in The Drive by author Joseph Trevithick detailing the bill that the chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, Marco Rubio, and other members of that committee are trying to get passed. Members of the U.S. Senate have expressed concern that the U.S. military, as well as other federal government agencies, have not been giving the appropriate amount of attention to reports of encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, more commonly referred to as unidentified flying objects, or UFOs, which may be linked to America's adversaries. They are now looking to order the Director of National Intelligence to work with other relevant agencies to produce a report detailing just what information they have on UAPs already, how that data is collected and processed, how it is getting shared, and just what kind of threats or other risks these objects might pose. Ladies and gentlemen, and non-human intelligence, I present to you the chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, Marco Rubio. Are we alone? <laughs> um, no, look, here's the interesting thing for me about all this and the reason why I think it's an important topic, okay? And that is we have uh, things flying over our military bases and places where we're conducting military exercises and we don't know what it is and it isn't ours. So that's a legitimate question to ask. I would say that, um, uh, frankly, that if it's something of uh, outside outside this planet, that might actually be better than the fact that we've seen some technological leap on behalf of the Chinese or the Russians or some other adversary that allows them to conduct this sort of activity. But the bottom line is, if there are things flying over your military bases and you don't know what they are because they're not yours and they exhibit potentially technologies that you don't have at your own disposal, that to me is a national security risk and one that we should be looking into. And so that's the premise I begin with. Let's clear this up. Who would be looking into this and they would be generating some sort of a publicly available report? So the Office of Naval Intelligence, this is over, has impacted the Navy for the most part, have seen reports on this now for the better part of a decade. Other countries have had similar reports. And so, the, but for our perspective is, there is someone flying in the airspace that no one else is allowed to fly in. And we don't know who it is. And it isn't something we have. We need to know what that is. I mean, that that's, in my mind, I mean, that's, I don't understand why we wouldn't want to know what it is. Maybe there's a completely sort of boring explanation for it, but we need to find out. Um, and, and, and so that's really what we're asking about. And we're asking them to make public as much as possible that information. None of that really fits into the mold of classified per se. All right, but what's, so what's your gut? Are we alone in the universe or is there something else out there? I don't have a gut feeling about it because it's a phenomenon, it's unexplained. Um, you know, I go, I just want to know what it is. And if we can't determine what it is, then that's a fact point we need to take into account. I wouldn't venture to speculate beyond that. To kick off an analysis of Marco Rubio's historical sentiments, I'm going to first provide you a tweet by writer and producer Bryce Zabel, who I happen to co-author an article with that was published very recently titled, We Can Handle the Truth, Why Now is the Perfect Time to End the UFO Cover up. Pinch me. Hearing these words said out loud by the man who runs the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence is mind blowing. It demonstrates that the way into true disclosure is looking into the phenomenon to see if it poses a danger. Well, any way in at this point. I agree with Bryce Dable's analysis. To get disclosure, you have to ask the question Are you UAP a threat? And bear in mind, the Pentagon is not the Department of Kumbaya. The Pentagon is not the Department of initiating contact with non-human intelligence in a peaceful way. The Pentagon is the Department of Defense. So people in the DOD, they're going to look at these vehicles and they're going to say, wow, those, the, those things, whatever they are, have amazing capabilities. Now, what is their intent? They don't know what their intent is. We can only speculate on, on what their intent is. Even... Experts on UFOs will mostly will tell you we don't know what the intent of these UFOs are. Likewise, the people on the Intelligence Committee within the, within the Senate are going to be focused on what is the intent of these machines? Do they pose a threat? I want to know. I need to know. Why wouldn't we pursue answers to that question? 
And we really don't have a conclusive answer to that question. We don't know the time frame that this intelligent works. So you can't just say, well, they haven't blown up any aircraft carriers, so they never will. I don't think they will. But like, you're going to really apply human psychology to non-human intelligence? That doesn't even make sense. Rubio made an interesting comment in this clip. He said that other countries are also having these sort of reports. So this is not a, this is not a phenomenon that is exclusive to the United States. This is happening all over the globe. And as you recall, if you watch Unidentified Episode 1, Season 2, they an analyzed UFO incidents over three countries, Afghanistan, Kosovo, and Vietnam, and from three different periods. The Vietnamese encounter was from 1970. The Kosovo encounter was from 1999, and the encounter in Afghanistan, 2009. So this is a worldwide phenomenon, and it stretches back many, many decades, and yet we still don't know what we're dealing with. Marco Rubio made a fascinating comment in the clip that I shared with you. He stated that it, if this phenomena is from off-planet, that might be better than if it's from an adversary like China or Russia or some other adversary that has leapfrogged the United States technologically and can partake in these kinds of activities that have been observed, such as what Commander David Fravor observed on November of 2004, where him and his wing woman encountered a vehicle that could fly rings around their F-18 Hornets. It's a matter of public record that the Office of Naval Intelligence has conducted at least three classified briefings for members of key committees and leadership offices. And this would encompass Marco Rubio. And the reason I'm bringing this up is Marco Rubio has almost certainly been briefed on UFOs by the Office of Naval Intelligence, and yet he still conveyed that it might be better if this unknown technology stems from another world than if it originates from an adversary. And the reason that's an important point is because a lot of people like to claim that the military is fear-mongering and this and that, but if the military was fear-mongering, I don't think Marco Rubio would have made that sentiment. And I, in fact, I agree with Marco Rubio. As much as I do believe that this unknown intelligence is a potential threat, I still believe that human beings are the biggest threat of all. And I would actually, myself, most likely prefer that this intelligence comes from something outside the human race than that the Chinese or the Russians or some other adversary has this game-changing technology where they could literally rule the world. Please don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can become a YouTube member. Join now button below. You can become a patron. Or you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. Or you can even just slap a like on this bad boy. And I will appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. episode.